So while I understand uh, audience may already have some brief understanding of DMA buff and DMA buff heaps, uh, this is just a refresher. So DMA buff heaps were introduced uh, for sharing buffers between multiple devices, uh, primarily avoiding copies uh, for pipelines. Um, and DMA buff heaps provides a user land interfaces for allocating uh, particular type of memory. Uh, currently, upstream supports uh, CMA, uh, DMA buff heaps, and system heap, which allocates from body. To support secure use cases, uh, now we can come to the point, uh, what should be the terminology of these use cases, whether these should be called secure, restricted, or protected. But um, in, this, in, in the context of this presentation, we'll be referring them uh, both as protected and restricted. In Qualcomm context, uh, some of these use cases, we refer them as secure. So there is a need to support secure DMA buff heaps. Uh, and what is the property of these heaps? Uh, the specific type of memory these heaps are referring to they are restricted from HLOS access. The restriction can be um, partial, say, read-only, or altogether there is no access from HLOS. And not only HLOS, uh, different uh, VMs uh, can, can have different uh, access control uh, for these uh, heaps. Um, and that is the primary need for uh, secure DMA buff heaps. Now, what are the methods to restrict uh, the buffer access? Uh, there are XPUs uh, in some vendors uh, and in Qualcomm solutions to protect this memory region. The other method is through type 1 hypervisor stage 2 based restriction. Through stage 2 page table, the buffer access can be restricted to certain VMs. I've given some references if you want to uh, you know, understand more about this in the footnotes. So the question arises, why we need protected DMA buff heaps? Um, so the use case requiring protected DMA buff heap, protected buffers, so we understand some use cases uh, should be protected from HLOS access. Now they require protected buffers or restricted buffers uh, they can take benefit of DMA buff in the, the mechanism it provides for a pipeline and user space uh, uh, interfacing. Now, below are the few examples in Qualcomm case where these heaps can help. Uh, they are secure video playback and fast RPC, CPG use cases which are needed for video post processing. I suppose for other vendors, they may have their own use cases which can take advantage of uh, uh, protected or restricted DMA buff heaps. Now, these use cases can also be achieved using custom user land and kernel driver interactions, but there are a few challenges what I want to talk about. Now, if I take example of FastRPC, uh, FastRPC use case at present in upstream is able to uh, achieve uh, the functionality of restricted buffers without actually using uh, restricted DMA buff heap. And the way it is done is uh, the buffers are allocated by unrestricted DMA buff heap, uh, which are supported in upstream. And through FastRPC kernel interface, uh, the kernel driver, fast RPC kernel driver protects this buffer using Qualcomm SCM interface. Now, this can be achieved uh, by, uh, now, as, as, you, as you see, this is achieved by a kernel interface, but the kernel driver is aware about the specific type of the memory the use case has to use, which is not giving this decision to user land alone. Kernel driver is involved. In, in this case, which, uh, which can be avoided if we substitute uh, this functionality with a restricted DMA buff heap, uh, where user land alone will have the decision or knowledge about the type of memory this pipeline or this use case need to use. 
So these are example of some of the downstream Qualcomm secure DMA buff heaps we are using. There are secure system heap, which all of these cases, the buffer protection is through Qualcomm SCM interface. Uh, the allocation methods differ. Uh, in secure system heap, we have system heap, uh, buffer allocation. In secure cu custom CMA heap, we have cu custom CMA heap, which patches are posted in upstream. Uh, secure carve-out heap, there are carve-out bitmap maintained. The buffer protection method in all the cases are through Qualcomm SCM interface. Now, as we see example in Qualcomm case, there are three type of secure uh, DMA buff heap required. I suppose in case of other SOC vendors, they may have their own use cases. Now, the common part is uh, any non-secure, any, any uh, restricted DMA buff heap would have two interfaces. One is uh, the buffer allocation, and other is to protect the buffer, uh, uh, their own uh, uh, buffer protection methods. Uh, two examples I have listed here is Qualcomm SCM assign, and second is Opti or vendor-specific buffer protection, uh, which may or may not use XPU underlying. Now, each vendor would need a separate uh, heap-based memory protection method. Now, if we implement vendor-specific heaps, this is how it will look like. In Qualcomm case, if we say secure video playback, may use Qualcomm secure pixel heap, whereas in vendors, uh, there can be vendor opti-specific and further heaps. So I suppose this is going to fragment the system, and we can have, if we are supporting vendor specific DMA buff heaps, we are going to have further more heaps. So there was attempt in upstream uh, some time back to support vendor heaps and based on community feedback and our feedback, the discussion, um, there was a suggestion to provide restricted heap ops as internal ops on the DMA buff try to reduce some of the fragmentation arising out of various allocation methods and buffer protection methods. So at present, uh, there on top of these restricted heap ops, uh, few vendors have posted their patches utilizing these heap ops, um, including uh, Lenaro, Opti, IC, uh, those patches are posted. Uh, one of the suggestions on top of reducing uh, code duplication by using restricted heap ops is if we can have named heaps based on use case rather than vendor. Now, secure video playback is a common use case. Uh, there can be vendor specific uh, differences in the way they secure the buffers. But from user land, uh, it is one and the same. Uh, do we really need abstraction uh, do we really need user land to be aware what kind of buffer protection method the SOC is applying? Yes. Okay, so user space needs to be aware, for instance, if you actually have intention to only share it between, say, two devices, but not the third device. Mm -hmm. So you actually need to separate allocation to binding to device A and B, but not C. Because I've seen a use case where all memory was, say, assigning to a protected domain. Uh, that included both graphics, but also crypto buffers, and you could dump the crypto buffers using the GPU. <laughs> so that's why you need to actually bind memory to a device based on the use case. I understand, uh, but uh, in, if the difference is only between, say, Qualcomm and other SOC vendor, where the buffer protection method may be different in QCOM SCM and uh, Opti, if based on that difference alone, and the use case is the same from user land, uh, they will expose different uh, uh, named heaps. Yeah, but my point, say if you have a device with 10 devices, how many heaps would you need, right? Mm -hmm. So instead you should like have a allocate the memory and then bind to these and these and these devices. Because then say a stage two based setup can then just map it into those IOMMUs. So in downstream, we do have this mechanism, which is a dynamic uh, protection through user space. Now, it is again use case dependent. Uh, 
some use cases uh, require buffer protection during allocation, where they don't want to pollute the user land uh, that after allocation, you are protecting the buffer in a second stage, in, in a next step. Uh, yeah, my point is that you have multiple state, uh, stage to your second stage mm -hmm. page tables that you partially update like one of the devices, but not the other one. So you, you can't just say you abstract away whether there's a stage two, because like only the app might know or something in the kernel might know actually which devices need access to something. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. OK. Point taken. So uh, this is uh, my last slide. Uh, may, I add, uh, may I add something to that? Uh, sorry, I don't have uh, full experience in the field, but is there no other mechanism for user space to know what device this need to be mapped to? Uh, because this is a problem we are also looking at. Uh, Apart from the protection mechanism, uh, the user space also need to describe, OK, map this to decoders or map this to display. Uh, so is that something also that has been looked at? Uh, looked at uh, so when you say map it to display, it is uh, from, if I say ARM terminology, these are particular VMIDs. Or we are saying from attachment uh, perspective in the pipeline. Because if it is attachment, e even if we take out a restricted heap requirement, uh, the attachment are still done in the pipeline where you export the buffer and various devices can attach to it in, in, in a, in a non-protected use case currently. Yeah, but to user space generally, it's just like clubbed up as one name of a heap. Yes. Can we not like do more granular level? OK, this particular trust zone protection and these, these, these. Uh, VMIDs. Okay. So, so in downstream, we do uh, in the reference I was giving for secure system heap. Uh, they are named heaps where uh, every VMID, a separate heap is uh, exported to user space. And uh, uh, so they can directly allocate from the named heaps. There is no metadata, side metadata provided from user land uh, that though we are using restricted heap. But this is the type of restricted heap I need to allocate. So it is explicit uh, in, in, in our case. Uh, but it does increase the number of heaps uh, multifold. And as we mix up number of SOC vendors, then it is going to explode. Uh, excuse me, if, if you already said that, I missed the, the first, the beginning of your talk. But why do you need it, uh, the separate DMA heaps at all? Why can't you uh, just export the buffer from the one device and then import it to another device? Because both secure playback and what you said about the uh, video processing from, I think, uh, Iris uh, through the Fatal PC or from covered by allocating a buffer in, by one device and then input it to another device? Uh, so that is the case where it is uh, not restricted buffer. So where we need to apply a certain restriction on the buffer where HLOS or particular VM cannot access, um, that cannot be achieved with the existing heaps. Unless, unless, uh, unless there is a like the example I gave of fast RPC. Unless the, from user land to kernel, the example fast RPC, they intimate uh, fast RPC driver to apply that restriction uh, after allocating the buffer. Uh, specify the restriction when allocating the buffer to the device that allocates it. So, so the I, allocation uh, allocation in is happening with the DMA. Current, current case, if you see, during DMA buff heap IOCTL call, where from user land, you are indicating to the DMA buff, drive, DMA buff heap to allocate a buffer, whether as scatter gather buddy or from CMA. So that's uh, where it is the allocation is happening currently. You can have other methods, like you can do directly from the kernel driver, you can allocate, OK? Yes, and yes. you can have your own custom interfaces, but that does not fit into the DMA buff. The, the core idea here is the, we are not keeping the logic what is the use case and association to protection method in kernel. That control we want to keep with the user land. 
because it is more aware about the pipeline elements okay and and whether it is a secure use case and it wants to apply that uh, the the protection uh, the user space can easily fail to do that if it's not done properly and also well, i'm just slightly resistant to the idea of generic allocators mm -hmm. okay Dave. Um, yeah, I guess <laughs> I think it's really, really hard to abstract away the semantics, like, you know, just having a heap called SVP, which is, you know, enough for a certain level of wide find, like, that is really appealing in a lot of ways, but it means completely different things on different platforms. So. You know, you can have um, codec and display only. Um, that can be enforced by you take page faults if you try to map it to the GPU, or you read nonsense if you try to sample it from the GPU because the encryption key hasn't been applied if it's actually encrypted. Um, or some of them are the APU takes a hard reset that's out of your control. So I think at some level, user space already has to be pretty well aware um, what level of protection it's going to apply because, you know, it has, to, it has to tell downstream elements. Like, you know, if you're trying to do SVP on a platform where you know that the display controller will get your video on a plane no matter what, then that's the way you can configure that for that platform. But you also need to to tell the display path, you cannot import this into the GPU. You know, if you need to fall back to the GPU for any reason, then just don't even try, like, show this as black. Whereas on other platforms, you know that you're not going to hit direct display paths and, you know, whatever the platform owner is has sort of made that decision that accessing via the GPU is okay. Um, or another example is, um, you know, if you don't have HDCP, then you have to downgrade content over an external link. But what's an external link varies a lot depending on the use case. Like, you can have an extremely non-secure external display link, but if it's in the back of an airplane seat, the odds of someone disassembling it and, you know, actually intercepting that are low enough that it's still considered secure. So I just think there's so many platform and product specific things that you can't just say this is SVP and still have it actually be useful to user space as much as it would be good. Okay. But that would require uh, user land having awareness about uh, various vendor heaps and uh, based on the platform they would need to uh, you know tie the use case. There may be uh, different uh, steps, but in, in case there is there are no differences, uh, just the buffer protection method is different, and that's why now the vendor has a different named heap. Uh, so that that uh, abstraction now has to be within user space somehow. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, there's already so many hoops you have to jump through to get the content providers to trust you that you know that boat's already kind of sailed, I guess. So this is my last slide uh, for. To utilize these heaps, as we, as I said, downstream we have these heaps. Uh, on upstream, we are trying to make support for secure video playback and other use cases, which require protected or restricted DMAP of heaps. Uh, so we have posted a secure system heap examples, um, secure context bank support we have posted. Uh, now. Uh, early other vendors, uh, so far what posting is done the. The buffer protection on the SMMU side is done by Opti or through SCM, uh, the T uh, Trusted Execution Environment. In, in our case, it is through HLOS. So ARM SMMU driver having support of uh, page tab securing the page tables. So that support we have posted. And that is, so far currently it is uh, Qualcomm uh, ARM SMMU driver specific, but it can be extended to any other vendor 
who want to utilize HLOS-based uh, page table protection. Um, Iris, we'd see a non-secure support that is posted, and uh, Iris, we'd see secure support will follow. So once all these building blocks are in place, we should be able to support uh, secure video playback and other secure use cases on Qualcomm platform. Okay. Any, any question? Okay, so uh, getting, well, just to explain to everybody else, Iris with C is the uh, video mem to mem decoder. Maybe that makes your last slide slightly more or, or more obvious to other people in the, in the room. Uh, and that's actually my question. So if you say that uh, the DMA buff is allocated from the external heap, and then it is either allocated as protected or it is later said to be protected, how can you make sure that rogue user space does not give unprotected buffer to the VC driver and tell that, yeah, it is purely secure, please decode high quality video context to it. So it is, uh, it is enforced through access control. Uh, now uh, in, so various vendor can have their own different ways to, uh, you know, enforce access control. Uh, but in type one hypervisor cases, uh, the way it is implemented is, as I said in my talk, uh, SMMU has also support for secure page tables. Uh, the end-to-end, -end, yeah, I'm, I'm coming to the answer. So the, if, let's say, uh, the user does not allocate from the protected buffer, okay, and it allocates an unprotected buffer and try to configure rest of the pipeline uh, for a secure use cases. Now the hardware would utilize that in ARM we have uh, configuration like SIDs um, uh, for accessing, tagging every access along with the SID. So in for use cases which are tagged differently for secure and non-secure use cases. So you can assume in this case uh, non-secure buffer will be tagged with secure SID configuration and that access will not go through. So what does that mean? It will it will crash it will, the machine. It will cause a, it will crash the machine. Oh, so thank you. You just crashed my phone or my laptop. Can can <laughs> we don't can we not do that, please? So I'm not entirely sure whether this part <laughs> where a user can completely start, but I'm seeing if it is able to do that, uh, then access control will will catch it. Yeah. So this should be handled by the driver, not by the user space, because otherwise you have just crashed my laptop. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so my understanding is I have limited understanding on the video driver side, but uh, there will be usually checks on the driver side uh, about pipeline establishment, okay? Not, uh, so I may be contradicting myself on the driver awareness part, uh, but if somehow those checks are not there and s we are able to provide a buffer which is not secure, a system would not allow it from access control perspective. But yeah, you may be right uh, in, in case uh, uh, if driver is, uh, user is able to allocate, then there can be issues. Who is the consumer of these buffers? Is that secure world, or are they also mapped to like non-secure VMs? Uh, so these are protected use cases. Uh, as, as I earlier mentioned, uh, so protected not necessarily means secure. Uh, so secure traditionally people refer with trusted execution environment which can access. Uh, protected is what uh, non-HLOS, uh, sorry, HLOS has certain restrictions uh, on that buffer. Um, by consumer, these we are talking about DMA um, use cases. So DMA engines are consumer of these buffers. But they must be like CPU accessible by some entities. Are these are these trusted apps? Are these not necessary? Uh, CPU, CPU can still have just a control path 
where it may or may not necessarily have uh, um, data access to these buffers. So it is just setting up the pipeline. So who writes to these buffers then? Directly hardware? The EMA, yeah. Hardware. Which, which hardware? So like in secure video playback, uh, um, you can have uh, video, um, video IP will be accessing these buffers. That must be software. No, I, uh. I, the hardware components. So these, are, so DMA primarily we are using, DMA buff we are using for the DMA pipeline and these are DMA engines uh, who are consuming and generating these buffers. So not necessarily, there can be cases uh, by restriction, the restriction can be that it's uh, accessible by both HLOS and non-HLOS, but it is again use case uh, dependent. Can you give us an example of the pipeline? Sorry, at least the beginning of the pipeline to be CPU accessible. You know, like if it is decoder, the input to the decoder will be decoded, decrypted content, and that will so be the control can be. Okay, so that, so that is for hardware decryption and hardware crypto engines. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Any, any questions? Thank you.